this is calcite. It's a rock. Many people might look at this and think, cool rock. But here at Electron Impressions, Jack, Ethan, and I, we think a little differently. We think, well, what would happen if I put this rock in a particle accelerator? But not like the particle smashing large hadron collider, more like a linear accelerator, a type of particle accelerator that generates a beam of high energy electrons. The same tool we use to make our Lichtenberg figures. Now we're still working on the whole getting a camera in the particle accelerator thing, but I'm going to take this rock and put it in the Linac. So right after I remove it from the Linac, it looks like a normal rock until I move it into some darkness where we can see it starts to glow orange. If I move into an even darker area, we can see the orange glow of these rocks much better. And then if I lock myself in the bathroom with my rocks and I turn off the light, I could probably use this as some sort of lantern. Now, for reasons that I'll explain shortly, this glow is very sensitive to the temperature. So if I were to allow this glowy rock to cool down in the freezer, the glow would stop. And then if I were to drop that cold rock into some very hot water, the glow would turn back on and it would be brighter than it would at room temperature. So what's going on here? What's the underlying mechanism? Why is this rock glowing? Why is the glow so sensitive to temperature? And how long does it last? Well, as with many things in life, this phenomenon can be explained by crystalline defects and electrons. We know that this rock is calcite or calcium carbonate. And this is a simple drawing of the crystal structure of calcium carbonate. The structure itself is not too relevant in explaining the mechanism on a surface level, but what I want you to notice here is that we have three different elements. We have calcium, we have oxygen, and carbon. Now, calcite can come in a lot of different flavors, but the variety that we're using in this experiment has a special type of defect where calcium atoms are actually substituted by manganese atoms. So as you're traveling through the crystal structure, the calcite, every now and then you'll find the manganese instead of a calcium. These manganese substitutions are integral for the glowing process to happen. That is, if I just had pristine calcite with no defects or no solid solution, I would not see a glow when I irradiated it. So then let's see how this manganese plays a role in the glow. Let's turn on the electron beam and irradiate this crystal structure. When we turn on the beam, we notice that carbons and oxygens leave the lattice. This is because the high energy electron beam can induce a process called radiolysis. In this process, the high energy radiation breaks and rearranges carbon oxygen bonds. This can cause some of those carbons and oxygens to leave the lattice entirely or leave and get stuck somewhere else. And so when they leave, there's a vacancy in their prior position and possibly some trapped species somewhere else in the lattice. And these vacancies aren't really cut and dry. They aren't necessarily just CO2. They could be CO or just oxygen as well. But we'll stick with CO2 for illustration. So let's keep that in the back of our head. We created vacancies as well as trapping evolved species. But these aspects alone aren't going to cause the rock to glow. So what else is happening in the particle accelerator to allow these rocks to glow? Well, on top of the vacancies in the trapped species, we're also going to get an induced conductivity as a result of the electron beam. The high energy electrons from the beam excite intrinsic electrons in the material, allowing them to conduct when they otherwise wouldn't be. When these electrons are promoted to an energy level at which they can conduct, they leave behind a hole at their origin. These holes can be thought of positively charged absences of electrons. They aren't real particles as we think of electrons or positrons or protons, but they do behave as positive charge carriers and are mobile. So in our lattice, we have empty vacancies as well as places where the atoms that occupied the vacancies were rejected to. We have mobile conducting electrons that are intrinsic to the material, and we have their counterpart mobile conducting holes. And we can't forget about those manganese substitutions. So now that we're considering all of these aspects, let's take a look at the big picture. Our mobile electrons and mobile holes can't stay mobile forever. Remember that they were promoted to this level by the energy in the electron beam. So eventually they will cool down and become non-mobile again. This process is called thermalizing and the vacancies as well as trapped species serve as spots for these electrons to get stuck in once they thermalize. But we'll focus on the vacancies. This is now a different type of defect. This is really close to something that we call an F center, a type of color center. 
An F center is a special type of defect where an electron is trapped in a vacancy. But in an F center, as I understand it, the vacancy the electron is trapped in is a single anion vacancy. Conversely, here the vacancy can be made up of multiple combinations of anions and cations. So because of that, I don't think you can get away with calling this defect an F center but you could probably get away with calling it F-center like. But who cares what we call it? We have an electron stuck where you wouldn't expect it. On top of this, there are holes that are also trapped. And this state is metastable for both the hole and the electron, meaning that the electron and the hole are sort of satisfied with being there, but they could easily get out. At low temperatures, when there's less energy available in the lattice, the electrons and the holes are pretty satisfied with being there. But at higher temperatures, when there's more energy available in the lattice, the electrons in the holes can more easily escape. At room temperature, this state is sort of metastable, so the electrons in the holes are escaping their traps, but not extremely quickly. At this temperature, it would take a few hours for all the electrons and holes to leave their traps. Because of this, these defects can stick around for quite some time after irradiation stops. And it is the untrapping of these electrons in the holes from their traps that causes the glow in the calcite that we see when we take it out of the particle accelerator. When these two charge carriers have enough energy to untrap themselves, they quickly recombine. And when they do that, a good amount of energy is released. If this recombination occurs nearby manganese, the manganese can absorb some of the energy that was released during the recombination, and it itself can then be excited to a higher energy state. However, for manganese, this higher energy state is not so stable, and it will quickly fall back down to a lower energy state. And during that process, it will again release this energy. And some of that energy is released as light. Specifically, orange light. This is where the orange glow comes from, from the decay of manganese from a higher energy state to a low energy state and some of that energy differential being released as orange light. And this is also why the glow stops at low temperatures. Because at low temperatures, the electrons in the holes are not detrapping themselves, they are not recombining, they are not transferring some of that recombination energy to manganese, manganese is not being promoted to a higher energy state, and so manganese is not decaying back down to a lower energy state, and finally, manganese is not releasing some of that decay energy as light. And this is also why at high temperatures, the glow is much stronger because this whole process occurs faster and faster. And so there you have it. That is why we see this orange glow in calcite when it's irradiated. And this phenomenon is not unique to calcite. It occurs in other minerals and other compounds as well. Related effects are also seen in sodium chloride as well as potassium chloride. But the mechanisms are slightly different. And so these deserve their own videos. So thanks for watching for now. But we will see you.